I have gathered 10 tips and tricks for your MacBook. How can we zip files on Mac? Simply select the files you want to zip, right click and search for the option to compress. Select that and you will see your zip archive. Archive.zip. I recommend to rename it straight away to avoid confusion. So put a proper name on the zip and now you're ready to send it or store it. If you want to open it up, simply double tap. It will unzip inside the folder with the very same name. If you look inside that folder, we got all four files here ready to go. So that's how easy it is to zip files, to compress files on your Mac. How to copy and paste on your MacBook. We can use mouse or keyboard. First, right click on the object you want to copy and then search for copy. Click in the empty area, right click and paste item. Now we got copy of this folder. Let's try with keyboard shortcut. So I select this with the left click and then I press Command C and then Command V. So here's your difference between Mac and Windows. It's not Control C and Control V, it's Command, the one next to the space bar, all right? So just keep that in mind. Instead of Control C to copy, Control V to paste, on Mac we press Command C and Command V. And that's all. How to forget your Wi-Fi network on your Mac? You can click on Wi-Fi here at the top and then head to Wi-Fi settings from here. Or you can simply click on your Mac settings here at the dock. Then select network from the list and you will see the first option Wi-Fi. Click on it and our current Wi-Fi that we are connected to, it's at the very top. So if you want to forget the one you are connected to right now, just click details and then forget this network. It will ask you to confirm. If you click remove, it will be forgotten by your computer and you will need to join it manually and put the password again if you want to connect again. If you would like to forget a network that we are not actively connected, you can still find them on the list here in known networks. You will see those three dots. Click on that and you got option to forget this network. Let me show you how you can make a quick recording of your screen without any third party software. We simply need to open QuickTime. That's the program for playing videos on Mac. So I'm going to head to the launchpad where I can type the name of the app I need. It is QuickTime Player. So I'm opening this app without any video, so it will not pop up, but I can see it's active here at the top left, QuickTime Player. And from here we can make a quick recording of the screen. File, and you will see option for new screen recording. Click on that. And now you have option to select which area of your screen you want to record. We can record entire screen or we can record a selected portion of it. In that case, they will ask you to draw uh, some kind of rectangle on the area you want to record. Let's say you don't want to show your dog in the video. Just like that, click record. And now this video is already recording. So whatever I do here will be recorded and later on you can send it to somebody. If you want to stop recording session, click this stop button at the top. And we are done and here's the video. Take a look. Here's our desktop in a good frame rate and everything we did was recorded into this MOV video. Now we could use that to send it to somebody or to put into a bigger project to put to a video editing software and add it to our project, all right? So we can now click save. How can we reboot, restart a MacBook? Head to the Apple logo at the top left corner. Click on the little Apple icon and on this list you will see option to restart. If your computer is non-responsive, you cannot click on it. You kind of try to click, nothing happening. Try to click on the desktop once first to be sure the finder is active, not any other app, and then click on that Apple. 
If this didn't solve your problem, it's still unresponsive, you will need to press the power button on your keyboard. That's the very same button with the Touch ID, the fingerprint button. So just press and hold the fingerprint button until your computer shut down completely, and then you can just turn it on again. How can you check your battery health on your Mac? Simply head to Settings. By default, you should see Settings in your dock here. Then scroll a little bit down until you see the battery settings on the left. It's ne next to Network Settings here, just above the General. So click on the battery, and then you got the preview of battery health. In my case, it's normal, but I can still click this More Information icon. And I will get this pop up with all of the details. So, normal condition, capacity is 100%, so that's good. And I currently got a charging optimization on. So, in some cases, my laptop may charge only to 80% to preserve the battery. All right, so that's how you can check your battery life. 100%, that's a good score. Normal, so it's charging without any troubles. Let's learn how we can create a desktop shortcut on your Mac. With apps, it's pretty easy. Open up Finder, the smiley face, and then head to Apps. With that open, we can just drag out the app to the desktop, and it will create a shortcut. You see this little arrow here? That's just a shortcut to the app. The app is still in here. But the problem is with files and folders, because if I just drag out my folder here, that's not the shortcut, they move away my folder. So how can we create a shortcut? First, right click on your folder and you will see this option to make alias. So use that. And you got the shortcut to that. Now you can drag the shortcut out. And you got this little arrow indicating that just a shortcut. So for apps, you just drag it out to the desktop. For files, folders, first right click make alias and then use that instead of the original folder. How can we download and install Adobe Acrobat Reader for free on your Mac? The good news is the base version is still free, so you just simply need to search for it in Google and we're going to download it from the official website. So ignore first two results, they're always sponsor results and the result number three, get.adobe.com, that's the website. Click on that and you will be on the official Adobe website. So we are not getting this from like some shady sources. They got big blue button, download Acrobat Reader. Click on that. And as you can see, now I'm getting the install file. And they got this little help for us. We can click next here, or we can open up our downloads. It will show in your browser, or you can head all the way to your finder, to the downloads folder. I will click on this here. And here it is. We got this installation file. I can double tap and the installation will start. Let's continue. Select where to install for only for me or for all of the users of this computer. Let's continue. We can change the destination, but for me, I will install this on the default drive. So I click install. They may ask you to confirm your password if you are the admin of this computer. And after the password is in, the program will be installed on your drive. It may take a few minutes. In my case, they predict it will take less than one minute, so that's good. And we got the installation completed screen with this big green check mark. We can click close. And we can move the installer to trash straight away. All right, let's close this website. Now I'm going to head to App Launcher, the one here at the bottom with all of my apps. And as you can see, the newest app, the one at the end of the list is Acrobat. So I click on that. When you launch it for the first time, you will need to agree to license agreement. So let's click Agree. After we, of course, read it very carefully. Agree. And here we are. You can use it even without logging in to Adobe account or anything like that. We are in and now you can start opening your PDFs. And they will also ask you that do you want to make this as the default PDF reader. So if you click yes, 
all of the PDF in your system will stop opening in Apple Preview and start opening in Acrobat, all right? So be careful with that, it depends what you need. In my case, that's no. Okay, and I can simply open it up, whatever I need. And they got like sample file for us as well to check it out. We can open this up. Here it is, all of the basic features of Acrobat here. Keep in mind there's also another version of Acrobat that is paid, okay? So keep that in mind. There's some limitation on it, but it will allow us to open PDF documents and make some basic editing in them. Hey, there's a well-known bug that will make your mouse settings disappear from general settings. But there's a way how we can still access your mouse and change the settings for it. So by default, if you open your settings from the dock here, you will see this pop-up screen when you can scroll down and the mouse, keyboard, trackpad, all of those devices should be at the very bottom of the list. In my case, the mouse is shown correctly and I can adjust tracking speed, double click speed, scrolling direction, all of that is here. But in many cases, it may disappear, especially with a magic mouse by Apple. <laughs> so if you try to change some mouse settings, but you cannot see the mouse over here, in your devices, you will need to head all the way back to Bluetooth, select Bluetooth, and then search for the mouse on the device list for the Bluetooth connection. Then you can click this eye icon for more information, and you will have this pop-up where you can click mouse settings from here. And it will take you to here even if it's not shown on the list. All right, so this happened several times to me already, but luckily I was managed, I managed to access that from the Bluetooth menu without any trouble. So if it's disappeared from the list, there's still hope. Just search for the Bluetooth and click mouse settings from there. Let me show you how easy it is to take a screenshot on your MacBook Air. So here I am and I'm going to press a keyboard shortcut. Command Shift number three. You need to press it all together. And you will see the screenshot was captured. You got preview here at the bottom right corner by default, but you don't need to click on it. Click on it only if you plan to make any notation on it quickly. But if you just wanna keep the screenshot, after a few seconds, it will go from this preview to your desktop when you can see all of your screenshots. So that's the default location for screenshots on Mac, the desktop. All right, so that's the screenshot of the whole screen. What if you wanna take a small screenshot of only area of your screen? In that case, press Command Shift number four, and now you got this drawing tool and you can draw a smaller area of your screen. And now we got screenshot only of that, and this time I will not click on it and take a look. After a few seconds, it will disappear. And it's in our desktop already. All right, and there's one more option for us when we can see exactly what we're going to do next. So kind of the capture screen menu. To indicate this capture screen menu, press Command Shift number five this time. And take a look, we got this capture screen menu and we can decide we wanna make a screenshot of entire screen, screenshot of selected window, screenshot of the area that we point ourselves, or we can even record the screen or record the area if we need. So that can be additional feature if you want something to be kind of recorded as the video, not as just image, all right? So in that case, if you click this, capture selected portion of the screen, you got the capture of this portion of the screen. And if you click the first button here, capture entire screen, let's click and done, here it is. All right, so the keyboard shortcuts that we need to remember you're pressing it to get a command and shift, and then number three, the whole screen, number four, uh, part of the screen, and then number five, give you this whole menu that you can kind of select yourself. All right, that's how easy it is to capture your screen on MacBook Air. See you in the next video.